The forensic archaeologist will examine the area of interest and look for signs that may indicate that recent digging has occurred. This may include finding lumps of subsoil, or soil from beneath the ground, on the surface. This may indicate that recent digging has taken place. In the case of a recent burial of human remains, increased fly activity over a particular area may be seen. A victim recovery dog may also pick up the scent of decomposition and give a positive indication over an area which again would require the forensic archaeologist to investigate further. Plants may be trampled or because of the decomposition and nutrition in the soil, they may grow more actively over the location of a body. Exposure of the grave takes time and the forensic archaeologist can be seen here. The forensic archaeologist removes the material usually with a trowel and short shovel, and carefully transfers the material to buckets so that it can be examined systematically. The removal would be documented in their examination notes. The excavation starts with the removal of the uppermost layer, which in this woodland environment is the leaf litter. Once this is done, the exposed ground surface will be carefully examined. If you look carefully, you will see a darker brown rectangle or outline. Here it is highlighted by the yellow lines. This indicates that a rectangular area has likely been cut into the ground. At this point we cannot tell what this may be. All that we can say is that the soil has been disturbed and so an excavation must now take place. Careful exposure of the disturbed area will then be undertaken. This is normally done by dividing the area across its width. This is shown by the line AB in the image on the left. One half of the soil, called the fill of the hole, will be removed to establish whether different or distinct layers of soil can be seen in the cross section. Each layer of soil will be given a unique reference number and recorded to enable reconstruction of the deposition of the body. The different layers of soil and material that cover the body may tell a particular story as to how it was deposited in the grave and what layers of material have been used to fill the grave. As each soil layer is identified, numbered, recorded and removed, it will be placed on a top orlin and examined and sieved to capture any trace evidence or items of forensic significance. Soil sampling will take place throughout this process to capture the nature of the various types of soils that may be present in the grave fill. The exposure of the grave in its entirety takes time and the forensic archaeologist can be seen here exposing the grave. As you can see, the process requires various types of tools, including small brushes, so as not to damage the remains. Once the final remains are visible, the forensic archaeologist will prepare a sketch of the final view of the grave. The forensic archaeologist will produce drawings that show the relationship between the various features within the grave in detail and they will be drawn to a particular size and scale. During the excavation process, photographs will be taken by a crime scene investigator. These photographs, together with the drawings and notes of the forensic archaeologist, will form the primary record and will capture the process of excavation and body recovery. This record will assist in the reconstruction of how the body was deposited and, importantly, will form the basis of evidence that may subsequently be presented in court.